All right, let's take a look at this. This is the next phase. Forget about the timer, it doesn't matter right here. The pictures are not going to match the sound down here. I'm gonna leave you a link to a video that has all the Apollo 11 day one audio on it. You can check it out if you want. This was more compressed. I didn't have to load a one and a half to two hour video uh, to make this. This just shows different pictures of different parts of the mission. But the audio is the actual audio as recorded from Apollo 11. You can match it up with the other one. Uh, what I'm trying to show you here is that um, for those who may not know, you're going to hear a series of beeps. Uh, in fact, let's just play it and then I'll explain it. Uh, Roger, Apollo 11, go ahead. Okay, we're pressing on with the procedure. And uh, 11, Houston, we have a request for you. Okay, now, they had a system of beeps set up. See the signature here? Here's another one. You can tell where the beeps are going to be. The way they had it set up was they there would be a beep. The person would speak. When they were finished speaking, it would beep again. This was supposed to be a signal, I believe, if I remember correctly, so that because of the supposed delay between the two, they wouldn't cross each other up. They would wait for the hear for that ending beep before they spoke. And of course, there's going to be a delay. We'll calculate what that delay should be between the Earth and the Moon and back again. Um, but it starts with Houston, and we should hear Houston immediately. I'm going to repeat some of these things because they're important. Houston was on the Earth. They're transmitting to ABC, NBC, CBS, and the world here in the United States. And this audio recording should be instant from Houston, but a delay from space, just like the space station. No difference. So let's do it one more time. Houston starts, and then the astronauts reply, and then Houston comes back again. Uh, Roger, Apollo 11. Go ahead. Okay, everything's nice and stayed in here. Okay, can you pull the door open a little more? Right. Yeah. Okay. If you get the main down. I'm going to pull it now. And we're getting a picture on the TV. TV. Okay, we got a good picture, huh? Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a fair amount of detail. Okay, we can verify the position uh, the uh, opening I ought to have on the camera. Stand by. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. It's a pretty good little jump. Uh, Buzz, this is Houston. F2, 1 1 60th second for shadow photography on the sequence camera. Okay. Um, uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Now. 
That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, we're pressing on with the procedure. And uh, 11, Houston, we have a request for you. Now, what I want to point out is this area right here. Houston ends with a beep here, and then we've got a delay. All right, this delay is roughly, if I can get it to point me right here, 1.1, uh, 1.2 seconds. Uh, we're going to find out it's about one and a quarter seconds would be the delay uh, with radio waves traveling at the speed of light unencumbered. One more time, then we'll leave this. Uh, Roger, Apollo 11, go ahead. Okay, we're pressing. Okay, did you get the delay there? There was no beep at the beginning. Most of the time there is. That's one example where they it just doesn't work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay? All right, that's it for this part. Let's continue on. All right, now we need to do a little bit of math, and then we'll be all set up. How fast is the speed of light? Well, the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. Okay? 186,000 miles miles per second. I don't think anybody on the flat earth or the globe earth will argue that fact. Is it true? That's what they tell us. So we have nothing else to go by. Now we're told the average distance to the moon is 232,000. I'm going to go with 230,000 even. 230,000 even. So how long would it take unencumbered radio, television, whatever, radio, audio, transmission to go from Houston, Texas to the moon one way. Well, what we have to do is take 230,000 miles and divide it by 186,000 miles. And whatever the answer is, that's how many seconds. So it's almost one and a quarter second, but 1.23 seconds. All right, that's with no other wires, no other delay, no transmission stations, not going from the U.S. to Australia, which everybody wants to defend how we did it uh, with the satellites and different things like that. This is a direct beaming from the Earth directly to the moon, unencumbered, 1.23 seconds. So it would also be from the moon to the Earth if it was directed right from the moon, straight to Houston, Texas, to our television sets, no encumbrances whatsoever. Again, I'm giving everything to them. Another 1.23 seconds. So we multiply this times two, it should be almost 2.5 seconds round trip. Earth to the moon and back. Now, remember I said Houston is here in the United States. This was recorded here. We will assume that's instant, no delay whatsoever. So let's divide this by two again. So once Houston gets done, it should take 1.23 seconds before we get a reply from the moon if the very moment Houston is done speaking, no thought is required. It's an immediate feedback. Push the button. Here's your answer. 1.23 seconds. Absolute minimum. Absolute minimum by the physics of the speed of light. And radio waves, television waves, they cannot travel faster than a speed of light. If anything, they can be encumbered and different things like that travel through wires, resistance, we're not going to include any of that. 1.23 seconds. So if we hear Houston beep, hey, Neil, how you doing? Beep. And he immediately gets that at right when we hear it, which, of course, he doesn't. It takes you 1.23 seconds. But we're going to say he gets it instantly. When he hits the button instantly, beep, I'm doing great on the studio. I mean, on the moon. It, that reply the very beginning of that beep reply to us should take 1.23 seconds after the beep of Houston or after Houston is done speaking. Either way, whether the beep goes off or not, you can't answer a question before it's asked. And they're trained not to talk over each other anyway because of the beep system. So 1.23 seconds. If we get any number higher than 1.23 seconds, that's okay. There might be a delay or um, 
uh, Neil Armstrong might have to think about his reply. Um, we may be going through the Australia um, satellite part that's picking up the signal and transmitting it across the Pacific and then to the Atlantic and then to Houston or whatever way it goes, supposedly. 1.23, that's our magic number. We're going to get rid of all this 0.6 whatever, we don't care about that. 1.23, we're going to give everything in their favor. All right, let's just look at the diagram to make sure we got it correctly. Here's Houston with their antenna. They're transmitting directly to the moon, we're going to say. All right. The red indicates transmitting up to the moon, 232,000 miles. And remember we said, how long does it take for that to go? 1.23 seconds. So once Houston transmits, 1.23 seconds it takes before it gets to Neil Armstrong. As soon as he starts speaking, we should not hear that for another 1.23 seconds, once Houston finishes, at the very earliest, by the laws of physics, we cannot hear it earlier, his response, than 1.23 seconds. Because it's got to come back another 232,000 miles minimum. That's if it's going right into Houston and directly out to a person watching their television set. So here we go. Here's Joe Public watching the spectacle, Neil Armstrong on the moon. And this has been right in front of us the whole time, guys. The whole time. Let's get into the proof.